let's take a look at MS techniques and how they can be used in your recording and mixing. MS stands for mid-side. In MS recording, one mic, which is usually a cardioid or an omni, is used as the mid and is pointed directly toward the audio source. A figure eight microphone is always used as the side. It's placed as close to the mid's diaphragm as possible and turned so that the figure eight's lobes are to the sides and perpendicular to the audio source. There are microphones that combine both capsules into one body, which is convenient for handheld use during location recording or as a more compact stereo drum overhead. I'm using one of these mics for this tutorial. The outputs of the two capsules are run through a decoding matrix where the MS signals are decoded to left-right. The mid signal plus the side produces the left channel, and the mid minus the side produces the right. The advantage of MS recording is that by adjusting the decoder, the stereo image of the audio can be changed during mixing. It can be easily converted to true mono for broadcast compatibility, which can't be done with an XY microphone. Right now, you're listening to me on the mid capsule only. Now I'm going to switch to the mid and the side outputs. So now the mid signal is on the left channel and the side signal is on the right. And this is the other side of the mic. It's difficult to tell what this signal would sound like in the stereo just by listening to the raw mid side. So I'm going to insert a decoder. Now you're listening to the mid side microphone being decoded to left, right. The problem that I have here is that right now I'm speaking to the left of the mic from my perspective and my signal is heavier on the right. What I can do is use this side invert to flip the polarity of the microphone and now I'm more to the left and in front of the microphone and now I'm to the right. So you can use the side invert to invert the stereo image or use it if you're using two separate microphones, you can invert the mid and side polarity to accommodate microphones of different polarities. We also have a width control. One is full stereo and zero is mono. I'm going to speak to the left of the mic and start decreasing the width and as I decrease the width, now I haven't moved, but now I have a mono recording. So again, this is useful if you're doing work where you want to have the option of stereo or mono. You could use a mid-side mic like this. When I record in MS, I use the pre-insert direct outs in my mixer, which are here to feed my DAW software or an outboard recorder, and I listen to the post-insert signal, which means I can record in MS, I can monitor in left-right, and then still have the flexibility of MS when I get back to the studio. While most mid-side processing is done using a mid-side microphone and a decoder, it's also possible to encode left-right to mid-side. This is a very powerful way of working with premixed stereo material, uh, especially in a mastering type situation. So let's look at a few techniques I've found to be useful. What I've done is I've inserted a Mio comp here in my playback channel and set it to detect on the side chain input, which is being fed from the mid of my mic. I'm using this as a ducker just so that you'll be able to hear me over the music as I work. All of the processing that I'm about to do is going to be done in one of our graphs. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to actually set up the processing chain. So I'm going to insert a mid-side processor and another mid-side processor and just connect, connect these together. My inputs are feeding into the first processor, which feeds into another processor, and then I'm going to take the output of that processor to the output of the graph. First one, we'll enable 
and I'm going to use this as the encoder. First we have encode at constant amplitude. What constant amplitude means is that the output of this block will be compensated, level compensated, so that you can't overload the output. There's no way that you can combine the signals and have them clip. I'm going to use constant power because I want the full output and I'll just be careful with the levels. This last choice here lets you use a single processor as a width and rotation tool. I'm going to, I'll show you what those do, but I want to use an encoder and a decoder because I'm going to use some other processes as well. So we'll set that to constant power. And now I'll enable this and set it to decode constant power and run some music. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the width. But I've now folded that to mono. And now rotation. Just by using the width and the rotation, I can change the apparent stereo image of the music. The next thing that I'm going to do is actually show you what you can do with some dynamics processing. I think this mix is a little weak in the, uh, the main vocals, so I'll show you how you can actually change the vocal balance on a stereo track. By putting a limiter on the mid, I'm actually increasing the level of the center of the image. Now I can also use the compressor that I put in on the side to bring down the side image, and I'll do that and it'll be a pretty dramatic change. or we can decrease the center image. So just by using these dynamic processors on the mid and the side and then re-encoding to left to right, we can dramatically change the balance of the music. Another thing that you can do is use frequency based uh, EQing to make changes. So I'm going to grab a couple of EQ sections here. And I'll just connect these in in place of the dynamics. And I'm going to start back at the top and show you what you can do by EQing. What I really want to do here is I'm going to start off by EQing the side so that I can carve out some space for the vocals to sit.
can hear when I kick this EQ channel in it clears out everything around 500 Hertz on the sides which opens up a hole for the vocals to sit without actually changing their level Now, I'm toggling this uh, EQ on and off so that you can hear the effect, but one of the other things we can do, let me get rid of these compressors, is we can also use some of the other units in the Plus DSP license to uh, actually build a switch. So I'm going to take a 4 into 2 switch. So going to take this chain into the B input, take these into the A input, and then patch this. Now what I can do is I can use this AB switch to toggle between the processed and unprocessed audio, or I could use this as a crossfade with the blend. I'm going to roll the audio and then switch back and forth between A and B. To be so well employed with your suburban life. And by changing uh, this blend, as I said, I can actually combine the two of them. So say your friends, and you walk up those big stairs, and now you share your wealth, because now there's no one. So this is unprocessed, and when I turn that button off, that's processed. These are a couple ways you can work with MS techniques. You can use an MS mic with the decoder so that you can record in mid-side yet monitor in left-right stereo. And the really cool thing is to be able to use the MS processor to take left-right, convert it to mid-side, process the mid and side signals separately, and then recombine it so that you can actually modify premix stereo signals after the fact. I hope you can use some of these mid-side techniques in your work, and we'll be back soon with more ways that you can use DSP in your workflow.